Okay, I thought I'd do a video explaining how I tend to paint bricks typically. Um, I tend to vary it between four particular colors if I'm going to go for your traditional kind of reddish brown tone bricks. Um, I tend to use a combination of Indian Red from Winston Newton and Burnt Umber also from Winston Newton. Now, when it comes to the Van Dyke Brown, I tend to use the Daniel Smith one because I find the pigment to be a little bit stronger. And um, Sepia, I can't remember actually which brand I used for that particularly because it's been in my palette for a long while. But uh, I tend to use that for darker shaded areas like um, up in these regions right here that are going to be under an awning. I'll increase the amount of sepia I have into it to cause it to have a darker color to kind of get that shadow background to it. Uh, the mixture is pretty simple. All I'm going to be doing is taking a combination of these four colors and varying them as I need to and lifting the excess paint. So usually I tend to start it off with just adding in the Indian Red as my base color because brick tends to have more of a red undertone, at least um, where I'm from in the south. So and then burnt umber together to kind of start it off with. It takes a little while to get the color combination exactly the way I want it, but eventually you get to the point where you want that. Um, I always tend to add in a little bit of sepia because it just gives it a nicer kind of cool tone to it. Because I don't really want the brick to be too much of a warm tone. I want that hint of red in it, obviously, but not to the point where it's kind of overwhelming. Also, another thing I like to do before I actually put anything on the paper is I like to take it off to the side and test it. Like right now, that's that's a little too dark what I want, so I need to increase the water ratio. But as I'm painting the bricks, I will be adjusting it as needed because I don't want all the bricks to look uniform in the color because obviously when you look at bricks in real life, they really don't have a uniform color or pattern to them, really. Another thing I tend to do is I will lift up the excess paint to kind of create a light spot. Um, but let's try it showing it actually on the painting. I've been working on this one for probably a few weeks now on and off between time when I have off to work on it. Um, so all I'll do is I'll just take and match it up as best I can, because obviously this isn't going to be 100% perfect. But you just kind of give it a little bit of a shape first. Fill it in. I'm not too concerned that this is a stronger pigment right now, because I'm planning to lift out some of the excess color to help kind of give it more of a natural tone. So just with some water on my brush, I'm going to be lifting up some of the color and each time I'm going to be cleaning the brush back off and taking off the excess water when I do this until I get that light spot that I want. And that kind of leaves you the darker edges on there. It's not so consistent looking. And uh, you can just continue to do that. I've been doing this for a while now so you can see there is some variation in the shades and the tones and a little bit in the shape of the bricks, but it's... Basically, all I'll continue to do is just like fill this in, and all I did in the background here was I actually added in some masking fluid because there's actually some decorative iron work here, which trying to paint that without putting masking fluid on it would have been a real pain. I know some people prefer to do it that way, but I personally rather just mask off the areas I'm trying to protect from being painted. I will be adding in shadows later on to it so it won't stay exactly white, but it'll kind of be in the vein of it. And when we run over areas that have masking fluid, it can sometimes puddle like this, which can be a bit annoying at times, but not impossible to work with. I'm sorry, this has a little more red to it than I'd like, so I'm going to increase the brown tones to it to kind of give it a more of a darker tone. I 
just continue to play with the color, going back and forth with increasing the red, increasing the browns. I have occasionally thrown in a little bit of black, but it typically doesn't really work for what I'm doing most of the time, so I tend to avoid using black in my bricks. And um, this is just like, I know some people use flat brushes for this, but I just use a short liner brush. I just find it easier to work with them than I do for anything else. Um, I tend to typically use my round brushes predominantly for everything. And liner brushes is just my preferred go-to thing. Everybody has their one particular brush they really like or style of brush or brand even. So just kind of play around with things until you find exactly which one seems to work for you. And all I do is I just keep repeating the same process with the bricks until I get to the very end. Or like right over here where I actually have it where I want to stop the brick because there's actually going to be some foliage in this area. So I just kind of want the brick to kind of peek out some spots. So I just leave most of that blank there. And if anybody's curious, this is actually, um, what is the hotel down in New Orleans? I think it's been recently bought by somebody else who's renovating it, but it was known as uh, St. Vincent's Guest House. It was, it was actually kind of an interesting place to stay at, a little bit creepy. Um, but I've been wanting to paint this for a while now, but I haven't had time due to, um, my studies, so... I finally got some free time again to do this. Okay, this came out a little dark, but that's not a big deal. I can fix it really easily. In this case, because that's a little more of a puddle of paint, I'm just going to take a tissue. And I'm just going to lightly dab the area to kind of pull out the excess. You can do this. I only use this usually when I accidentally put on too much paint, but It's easy to fix little mistakes, and besides, watercolor isn't meant to be a 100% controlled thing. You are working with water, so. And I've seen some people do it where they add in um, kosher salt with larger chunks into their watercolors to kind of pull up some of the colors and cause spots. Um, which could be kind of cool with some types of bricks to do that with it. Just kind of play and experiment with it until you find exactly what you like. 